This is the Gear Bunker FJ Walk Around version two. We did one back in February or January in the snow when we first got this. And um, now, you know, in the first one, we kind of talked about what we were going to do over the winter. Now we're just going to kind of follow up and show you what we did do. So up front, we first started with this ResFab steel bumper and it had kind of a funky paint job on it and some corrosion. So we stripped it down to bare metal, uh, sandblasted it, and then used Raptor liner and went ahead and coated the whole thing. Added the Baja design um, sport fog lights in amber. And then moving over here to the center, we put one of the most key pieces of overland equipment on a winch with the Factor 55 um, closed system attachment on there. And, you know, as we were Raptor lining everything, we decided we're going to do the grill too, because it looked pretty cool. This stuff turns out great. First of all, it's super easy. You can get them on Amazon for like 125 bucks for a gallon. They come in four quarts. All you do is add the hardener to it, shake it up, put it into the attached gun, you know, that comes with it, and then just spray it on with a compressor. So that stuff worked out really good and uh, pretty happy with how that turned out. It's very consistent, a nice hard epoxy. Uh, as we move around, we did the same thing to the fender flares, the Bushwhacker fender flares. Instead of just the smooth plastic, we went ahead and uh, Raptor lined that as well. We also switched from a mud terrain tire to an all terrain tire. We used the, the general ATX grabber, which so far has been great. It's a lot quieter on the road and um, it's, it's pretty pleasant. It's been doing pretty good off road so far. Uh, up here we have the Baja Designs cow lights, which uh, are a ditch light. Um, the snorkel, we added the Fox Wing 270 degree awning folds out all the way around to the driver's side and gives a lot of coverage. Put our Tapui 10 on that we had before. We added scene lights. I have six of these S2 Sports from Baja Designs and they have amber covers on them which you can take off to get white light but uh, the amber light's pretty pleasant at night. doesn't blind you. And as we're coming around, you know, the fenders, the rear Expedition 1 steel bumper also had a nice powder coat on it, but we decided to match everything else and just kind of continue the look as we went around. We uh, scuffed that up and put the Raptor liner on it. Also, while I was underneath taking care of some of the rust on the frame, I found a great deal on a TRD exhaust. Had the tip powder coated black, just so it kind of goes with the whole theme, and we popped that on. So it's a good stainless steel TRD exhaust. In the rear here, we uh, ordered a bracket that could hold a, uh, the propane tank from Ignic on the back, which is nice because even we have the valve oriented. So when the doors open, I'll show you this later, we could just, we don't have to take this off the vehicle. We can just hook the gas line on there, swing it around to our cook station. Full size spare, slumberjack um, rear bag here. We use it for firewood when we go out to camp and then we burn the firewood and use it as a trash can coming back. So it keeps all the stinky food scraps and trash on the outside of the vehicle, not on the inside. Uh, I'll have a review on that. I've got some pros and cons about that. This other bracket that we put on carries two two gallon Rotopax cans. We're gonna use, I have, I, at home I have two fuel and two water. So it just kind of depends on the mission. If it's gonna be a long range mission where fuel is gonna be an issue, we can bring two fuel. Um, if it's a not a long-range mission and we need more water, we can bring two water or we can obviously divide it like that as well. Baja Designs rear fog lights also just kind of help when you're getting into the campsite, backing into a, a potential spot to camp. It gives you and your spotter a lot of, a lot of visibility. We have always been connected to the internet. Um, my wife and I both own small businesses, so when we're out camping, it's sometimes difficult to stay in touch with staff. So we added the WeBoost signal booster. And what this does is this just increases your cell boost by I wanna say between one and two bars. Um, it doesn't create a signal, it just boosts an available signal. So you already have to have some sort of signal for it to boost. So if you're in a place with no signal, you're still gonna have no signal. Uh, if you're a place with one bar, you might get two or three. So this side looks a lot like the other side as we're coming around. I'll we'll take a look since this is in the sun at the newly coated rock sliders also from ResFab down here. Um, those 
looked good with the Raptor liner as well. We stripped those down to bare metal and uh, that's basically what we got. All right, on the inside of the FJ, first thing we put here was the S-Pod Bantam. And this is a, a little LCD panel that allows us to control all the onboard electronics. It's got a pretty slick uh, setup in the under the hood where all the positives and negatives to all our devices go to. And then we're able to control them here independently. Front fogs, ditch lights, 50 inch driving light, work lights, rear lights, fridge, air compressor, and front locker. are all easily controlled here and we can turn it on and off to save a little bit of battery. It also has an on-road and off-road setting which allows you to run uh, different lights for off-road situations. And as we move through the cockpit here over to the right side we've got our navigation station and this is just basically set up with a ram mount and an iPad. So we run Gaia GPS on that and that is basically set up so either the passenger can operate it, you know, when we put it flush up against the dash or the driver can angle it towards him and operate it independently. We also have over here the micro mobile from Midland Radio and this is the MXT 400. It's their most powerful GRMS radio and I've got that hooked up to a orange box center console bracket for the FJ. And this is like a no screw mount that just kind of slides over the center console and it gives you a little bit of molly on this side and a little bit of molly on the other side. And we use the molly on the other side to mount the Midland radio. So that is pretty much what we got going in the driver's compartment. And let's move on to the back. But one of the biggest things you'll notice is we don't have back seats in this FJ. We took the two back seats out because it's primarily just going to be my wife and I and I ended up building a custom drawer system which gives us a lot more organized storage because the FJ really doesn't have a lot of cargo space when the rear seats are in and since it's just going to be the two of us I didn't want a bunch of loose stuff sitting around in the back seat so we just jerked those things out of there and I, I built this this is one of my COVID-19 home projects when we were stranded at home and I had a bunch of lumber and tools we ended up uh, putting this together so I'll just go through kind of how when we set up at camp when we pull in i've got all my camp essentials on the left side and i've got cooking essentials on the other side so when we first get to camp and these are locking 52 inch drawers so they will not they are latched in place can't get them out you've got to decouple them and then pull them out and then here's our camp stuff most important stuff like a frisbee but first aid kit hatchet Two chairs, a table, awning poles, tent poles, fire starter, bear spray, solar. This is a pop-up fire pit if we're ever anywhere where we can't make a ground fire. Um, just power stuff related. Um, this is the Yeti 500X Lithium uh, from Goal Zero. It's a new product that we're going to be testing. That fits in there nicely. So basically we'll get all this stuff, go ahead and unload it, and then put the drawer away. I guess while I've got it out, let me show you one other thing. I have a cutting board that I can pull out and I can either pull it out self-supported about this far if we're just like making coffee or a sandwich, but if we're going to put the stove on it, I'm going to leave the drawer out and actually allow the drawer to support it because these are 500 pound drawer hardware, so we can put whatever we want on this. So once that is set up, I'll show you the cooking side. So this essentially has, this was from our Yeti Go box and we liked it just because it was able to keep like spices and cooking and silverware stuff together. So I made this drawer divider wide enough so this could sit in here and also still have storage below for utensils, Ziploc bags, soap, cooking oil. All the stuff, the first stuff you need to get to. So you, can, you only need to pull the drawer out just a few inches to get to that. The next section has pots, pots and pans. This is the GSI Outdoors uh, Base Camper Stainless Steel Kit. We've got a coffee pot and always a jet boil just in case you need to make a quick shot of coffee or something, you know, frozen food or freeze dried food. As we move back here, we've got our big Cook Partner Steel um, stove and that's basically what we put up on the uh, cutting board and this is the skillet that goes with it. This is a collapsible sink for cleaning dishes 
just a couple other odds and ends. Water filter, if in case we're remote for a while, we need to replenish our water supply. We can just use this gravity filter to pull water out of a river or a lake and then just replenish our uh, roto packs that's mounted on the back. Um, shower packs. Basically all the cooking supplies you need and of course the most essential paperwork for any camping trip. Toilet paper. Uh, also on top of this drawer system is the Dometic slide or I'm sorry, the Dometic fridge. And this is on a DFG off-road tilting slide. So since it's up a little bit higher, you can just imagine if you pulled it straight out on a like a Dometic slide, you'd have a hard time seeing inside the fridge. So this one allows you to have it tilt. Just makes accessibility a lot easier to get in and out of here. Even my wife can see in and out of here without a problem. So this is wired to the S-Pod, so it is always on and controlled from the, from the driver's position. Um, more stuff from Orange Box. Let's come over here and look at this little panel here. So this is a Orange Box panel that mounts to the driver's side. It starts up here at this factory hook location and it uses the other factory hook locations that are in the sidewall. So no drilling required on this one. And it has allowed me to mount you know kind of essential stuff in case of an emergency i've got a fire kit here or a fire extinguisher here i've got a medical kit that's a tearaway all i have to do is unbuckle this and pull the whole thing off of a velcro and that is more for like vehicular accidents or stuff anything like that i also have a um, medical kit in the drawer but that's like for backpacking like if we're going to leave the vehicle and go somewhere this is just another molly compatible pack that has my tire deflators and air gauge in and also the air hose for the onboard air when I'm airing up and airing down. And then up here from Gzilla Designs is a snatch uh, rope here. I think it's a 20 foot snatch rope and a soft shackle. So I've got some recovery gear that's easy for me to get to when we are recovering another vehicle or being recovered ourselves. On this side, also from Orange Box, is kind of a basket also reusing some of the same factory mounting it just gives me a compartment to keep stuff organized in there i usually just keep a gore-tex jacket hat gloves um, when i'm traveling solo i'll put my backpack or i mean my sleeping bag and air mattress and pillow in there because there are situations where i may be sleeping inside the vehicle and i would want to be able to get to that stuff pretty easily from inside the vehicle when i built this platform I built it with fold outs. So if I move the driver's seat all the way forward and flip out the pad, I will have 72 inches from here to the back of the driver's seat. I'm 72 inches. It's not luxurious sleeping, but it's big enough to put an air mattress in there and I can just lay and sleep inside the vehicle if I'm making an expedient camp where it's either raining, pouring, or snowing and I don't want to get out and set up the rooftop tent or just a situation where I'm by myself and just need to crash for a few hours. So that's pretty much the back compartment. I'll do a more in-depth review of the drawer system with the sleeping pad. Uh, some of the additional items I failed to mention when I was out in the field doing the rig walk around was everything in the engine compartment. So let's take a look inside. All right, forgive the engine compartment. It's pretty muddy. It's an older vehicle and we got it kind of dirty this weekend. So back here in the back left corner on the passenger side, we added the ARB dual compressor and that's one of the most important things for airing up and airing down tires and we ended up using the the ARB manifold this is our where we hook up our airline and this is the front locker solenoid and the airline going down to the front locker uh, we also decided or we got a custom mount built for this that can house a one gallon via air tank down here so we just have a little bit more volume so when we're airing up these bigger 35 inch tires the extra volume that you can uh, carry in that one gallon tank does make quite a bit quite a big difference and it takes a little bit of relief off the um, compressor itself so it's not running full steam the whole time uh, over on the other side you're gonna have to also forgive this bird's nest of wires this is haphazardly put together right now because I have a dual battery uh, setup coming that's going to have two Odyssey batteries side by side. So all this is going to get redone and cleaned up. 
Over here is the S-Pod Bantam, and this is um, run into the cockpit where we control all our lights, fridge, accessories, and whatnot. And because the worn, let's start back over here, the worn winch, um, we had to relocate the control box because there just wasn't enough room up here inside the ResFab bumper to house it. So we used uh, another company's air compressor bracket, which fits in the FJ nicely here and bolts down solid. And we ended up putting the control pack up here, routing the wires along the frame and back out to the, uh, the bumper. So when we do need to winch, we need to pop the hood, pull this off and hook our winch controller up to that in order to do that. So that is pretty much what has changed most recently in the engine compartment of Godzilla here. And we will keep you posted as things change, like when we get the dual battery set up.